Hi, my name is Matt Deal. I'm a VIP AE at Cadence, and today I'm talking about uh, UVM scoreboarding with our VIP. Uh, Cadence VIPs all have the capability of callbacks. It's a really neat feature where you have access to transactions and other information at various stages of the protocol and for other interesting points. Uh, these callbacks uh, allow you to do error injection, uh, be able to modify the transaction before it hits the wires and uh, send it out. Another thing that you can do is with callback functions, you can uh, print extra transaction information that you might want to have printed to the log files. Um, another thing that you would want to do with callbacks is maybe trigger on, on potentially important events in your sequences. And finally, callbacks are a great use for scoreboarding, which is what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, with scoreboarding, actually, for, for, the, for the callbacks themselves, um, when, when a callback is enabled, the following three things happen, and they always happen in the same order, which is, which is good to know. Uh, the first thing that happens is the callback function Is, is called. So if you have extended the monitor, your monitor for the uh, UVM agent, the associated callback function will be called in any code that was in there, whether it be your log messages or, or doing extra accounting, um, will be called and run. The next step that happens is an uh, associated analysis port. Uh, the associated analysis port is written to. Um, and again, the callback function needs to be enabled for that to happen. And every callback function has its own analysis port. And finally, an associated event is triggered. So um, these three things always happen in order. The events are great. Maybe you did a UVM do uh, transaction right to a, a slave, and you are wanting to have your sequence wait until the response is received. And so you would maybe trigger or wait on that trigger. Uh, for our case, we're working on analysis ports. Analysis ports are great, simple ways to connect and enable end-to-end -end checking uh, for your UVM design, and, uh, and they work great with UVM scoreboards. So we need three things for this to work, um, for our scoreboard to work. First thing is we need a, a, a UVM scoreboard. So we're going to make a UVM scoreboard class. Uh, to save some time, myself writing, I write pretty slow, and yourself typing, uh, we actually have an example already available here at uh, Denali DDV API, System Verilog UVM Display Port. So in the Display Port Examples area, there is a util.sv file that has a, a scoreboard that's all ready to use and modify and use in other, in other agents. The second thing we need to have is we need to enable the callback. Again, if we don't enable the callback, these three things won't ever happen, so the analysis port that connects to our scoreboard won't ever get written to. Um, right here, I have some code showing how you enable the callback. In our case, we're doing a display port. Um, we have a source agent and a sync agent. The source agent is going to be transmitting data to the sync, and we're going to capture it at the, at the TX line queue exit. I'm going to Fix this. We want the sync to capture it at the RX line queue exit. So at the TX line queue exit, we're going to be capturing the data. And the, the nice thing about the TX line queue exit is the data is, is populated in the RGB fields of the transaction. So we have access, access to the RGB values instead of just the raw data. Same thing with the, with the sync agent. When the sync agent receives the data, uh, we're enabling this callback. When we get the data, Originally, when it comes in on the wires, it'll be raw data, but when it gets to this Rx line queue exit callback function, it's already been propagated enough through the protocol that the data is available in the RGB fields. Um, so that's, that's the fir first step is create the UVM scoreboard class. Second one is enable the callbacks, and now we need to actually connect them up together. Uh, and that's what this, this section of code is. And, and again, you can find it at the example uh, location I showed below. Um, but here in the connect phase, we're connecting the sources, TX line queue exit callback port. Again, every uh, callback has an associated port already set up for you. 
So we're connecting that to our scoreboards implementation of the same. And for the sync monitor, we're connecting the Rx line queue exit callback port to the scoreboards implementation of the same. So those three things, we have our scoreboard, it's connecting, it's working, uh, you're good to go. Uh, final things that you may want to do, in fact, you probably want to do at least one of these uh, at the end of your test, uh, check to make sure that your queue is empty, make sure all the outstanding transactions have been matched. Uh, one way you could do that is maybe in the post body for your virtual sequence. You could do a check to make sure that the uh, scoreboard queue is empty. Uh, another thing is maybe implementing a uh, mid-simulation reset. So maybe your virtual sequence has some things where it resets the DUT. And in that case, you'd want to clear out the scoreboard's queue. And finally, uh, some protocols and DUTs allow out-of-order transactions. So in this case, you might need to use uh, implement ways to uh, track based on maybe a transaction ID or some other heuristic to match your expected and actual values from your scoreboard. Thanks for joining us on Whiteboard Wednesdays. Check back next week. Mm -hmm.